The table saw is the heart of many, possibly most, wood shops. In this video, I'm going to cover some table saw basics with an emphasis on safety. Table saw is a great tool, but you need to use it properly to avoid any potentially dangerous mishaps. The fingers you save will be your own. Your table saw came with a blade guard. Learn how to use it properly and use it whenever you can. You may be thinking, but, but it gets in my way. Yes, it does. That's the purpose of the blade guard. Keep you from getting your hand or fingers too close to the spinning blade. I made a zero clearance insert for my rip blade, and I painted it red as a visual reminder not to get my fingers close when the blade is running. Red is the universally known symbol for danger. Pay attention to it. The blade is spinning in your direction at hundreds of revolutions per minute, powered by a motor of one or more horsepower. Things happen very quickly. The best way to avoid even a minor mishap is to use the safety features of your saw and pay attention to what you're doing at all times. Don't work at your table saw if you are tired or distracted. Your table saw should have a rip fence that will be used to cut boards to the desired width. I'll show you how that works shortly. The other accessory that comes with every table saw is a miter gauge, which is used to cross cut boards to length. You should always use either the rip fence or miter gauge, but not together, unless you use a stop block. I'll show you that technique in a few minutes as well. I found this short clip and just had to share it with you. It scared the snot out of me, and I hope you can see how dangerous the practice is as well. The person in this video is using a table saw to trim a small amount off the edge of a board. His hand is more than dangerously close to the blade, he is not using the blade guard or the rip fence. It was hard to watch, knowing how many things could possibly go wrong. Getting back to how to use the table saw safely, you should either buy or make a push stick. This is used between the rip fence and the blade to push narrow strips of wood past the blade. You can easily find plans to build one from a piece of scrap, or you can purchase one like I'm showing here. The feature I like most about this push stick is the non-slip surface on the bottom. Not an absolute necessity, but a nice thing to have is this feather board. You can use it to hold the board tight against the fence while making rip cuts. I'll demonstrate how to use it shortly. The last three items I'll mention are hearing protection, safety glasses, and a dusk mask. The table saw isn't the noisiest tool in your shop, but don't let that fool you into thinking it can't damage your hearing. Hearing damage is cumulative, meaning you lose a little at a time, but once it, it is lost, it can't be regained. Do yourself a favor and get some sort of hearing protection. I wear eyeglasses anyway, and I checked with my optometrist to make sure they were safe to use with power tools. If you don't wear glasses, you should find a comfortable pair of safety glasses and wear them anytime you're working in the shop. I didn't show the last item, but you know what a dust mask looks like. Make sure it's rated at least 90, N95 or better. I use and highly recommend the RZ masks with replaceable filters. I don't have a jointer in my shop, so when I have boards with rough edges, I use the table saw to clean them up if I need a smooth 90 degree edge. I have a rip blade in the saw with the height set so the gullet of the blade just clears the top of the board. I always use the blade guard when I can. For rip cuts, I like to use the feather board as I'm doing here. This accessory keeps the board pressed tightly against the fence before it reaches the blade. You use your hand to exert downward pressure on the board to start if it's a long board, and once the board is fully on the table, you should switch to a push stick to push the workpiece the rest of the way past the blade. I keep my push stick just to the right of the rip fence so I can pick it up easily as soon as I need it. The safest way to proceed after this cut is to shut off the saw, then wait until it comes to a stop before removing the workpiece. Then I slid the miter fence over so the board was being helped by the feather board once again, so that I could make that same slight trim on the other side. Now I have a board with smooth edges on either side where I can light on my patterns for cutting on the scroll saw. I need to make many train cars for the personalized name train I sell online and in my store. This piece of poplar has two rough edges, and I don't have a jointer, so I ran it through my table saw to clean up one of the edges. Then I moved the rip fence to two and a quarter inches from the blade to cut two long strips at that width. The board wasn't wide enough for a third strip. 
I set the blade height so the gold between the teeth is above the top of the board. This gives the blade room to clear sawdust from the cut. Notice that as soon as I had that set up, I moved the blade guard into place for maximum safety. I use a feather board to hold the wood tightly against the rib fence when I can, but this board was a little too wide for that, so I set it aside. I'll be able to use it for the next cut. I was just about to start the saw when I realized I still needed to put on my hearing protection and move the push stick to where it was easily reachable when I was ready for it. This is a long board, so I have an outfeed roller set up to support it once it reaches the end of the table saw. As soon as the board was fully on the table, I grabbed the push stick so I could use it to put downward pressure on the board for the final few inches of the cut. Then I shut off the saw and waited for the blade to coast to a stop before I pulled the board the rest of the way out. I could now use the feather board for the next cut. Notice that the feather board is in front of the saw blade. You do not want sideways pressure on the board after it reaches the saw blade because that could result in a dangerous kickback. In addition to the obvious rip cuts and cross cuts, the table saw also cuts rabbits, dados, and grooves. This rabbit type is spelled R-A-B-B-E-T. It's not the same spelling as for the animal. A rabbit is a cut made to fall off the board's edge. A dado runs across the grain and a groove runs along with the grain. These cuts can be made with multiple passes with a regular blade or with a dado blade. I need a three-quarter inch groove up the center of this two and a quarter inch wide piece that I ripped earlier from a wider board. I have a Freud stack dado set, which I set up in my table saw using a zero clearance insert. The groove only needs to be one eighth inch deep, and I have already set up my rip vents so the groove will be centered. I usually run a test cut on a piece of scrap to make sure these settings are good before committing to a workpiece. I use a feather board to hold the workpiece tight against the fence and a push block to keep it flat against the table. This is one of those places where you can't use the blade guard because the blade doesn't cut through the wood. After making this cut, the safest way to continue is to push the board past the blade, then shut off the saw and wait for the blade to stop spinning before moving the workpiece. I checked the groove, the groove for depth and it looked fine. I repeated the operation until I had the grooves in every board, then removed the insert and data blade and switched back to the rip blade. I have a re safety reminder about this step. Always pull the plug on the table saw so it can't be accidentally started while you're changing blades. One of the tricks I learned after I'd been woodworking for a while is an easy and accurate way to cut multiple pieces to the same length. Rather than cut and measure, cut and measure, over and over again, you use your miter gauge and rip fence set up in a very specific way to perform the task. This method is faster and produces more accurate results. I'm using my Craig miter gauge here because it's beefier and more accurate than the miter gauge that came with the saw. I made sure it was set to clear the blade and blade guard after inserting it into the miter gauge slot. I needed as many three inch long blocks as I could get from those two and a quarter wide pieces with the three quarter inch groove down the middle. I set the rip fence to three inches plus the thickness of the stop block I'll be clamping to the fence. The thickness of the stop block doesn't matter, but I would recommend a piece half to three quarter inches thick. This removes the need for measuring because all I have to do is push the board up against the stop block, then use the miter gauge to run it through the saw blade. Every piece will be exactly the same length. The procedure is easy. I take the long board and place the side against the miter gauge, then slide it until the end touches the stop block. I turn on the saw, then I push the wood into the plate using the miter gauge. The block is set up well in front of the plate so that by the time the wood reaches the blade, it is no longer touching the stop block. It is only supported by the miter gauge. After this cut is made, I slide the board away from the blade using the miter gauge as a guide to keep it straight. Once the piece is well clear of the blade and blade guard, you pull the miter gauge back to the starting position. At that point, you push the board forward until it meets the stop block again and you are ready for the next cut. For this method, I do not stop the saw and remove the cut off after each cut. Since these pieces are only three inches long and the fence is more than three inches from the blade, it's okay to leave them on the table. After I've made a few cuts, the new pieces will push the ones in front off the table. I know there are going to be more than 50 of these, so I have a container to catch them. 
Those are some of the basic things you need to know and follow to operate a table saw safely. It is a versatile tool that can rip stock to width or cut it to length. As I showed you, it's possible to cut any number of parts to the exact same length using the miter gauge and stop block clamped to the rip fence. You can use a table saw along with a dado blade to make dados, rabbits, and grooves. I'd love to read your comments on this video and I respond to every one. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. If you frequently need thinner stock than what is available from your suppliers, you should consider making your own by resawing a thick stock into thinner stock. The link to my very popular video on that subject is on the screen right now. I'll see you there.